Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. According to a new report, the latest data from the NASA space probe Voyager 1 has left scientists without a working model for the outer solar system. NASA scientists recently concluded that Voyager 1 may have reached the outer boundary of the solar system called the heliopause. However, the scientists were met with a surprising discovery. The solar wind surrounding the spacecraft had come to an inexplicable standstill. This was a surprise to scientists who had expected the solar wind to be directed laterally, like water hitting a barrier. Why is this discovery so surprising to NASA scientists? And how does this affect our understanding of the sun? The news came out that NASA's Voyager 1 indeed had gotten through the, the boundary of the solar plasma, which most people call a heliopause. Uh, what they discovered was that the Voyager was no longer seeing any rapidly moving solar wind particles. The, um, the particles that they were observing had essentially died out to almost zero, and there's a very interesting plot that they issued with their news, and I don't think there is anything in the standard model that would account for that. They expected the solar wind maybe to, oh, reach into some, uh, reach some sort of a wall, and then divert, change direction, go off in a 90-degree angle or something, but they didn't expect it to just stop. The Electric Universe model predicts a reversal of the Sun's electric field as a space probe approaches the heliospheric boundary. This boundary acts as a virtual cathode in relationship to the Sun as the anode in an electrical exchange. The charged particles from the Sun will not be deflected laterally as the standard model predicted, but the solar wind will simply cease. The EU model certainly predicts there to be an electrical uh, virtual cathode out there at the, in that neighborhood. And um, the, all of the data that uh, NASA has just released this week absolutely confirms that. I mean, they, they, they couldn't be more consistent with what, uh, what our predictions have been. The Electric Universe model of the Sun, which has been developed over many, many years, is essentially that the what we are living in is something very analogous to, almost akin to, a plasma discharge that has been done in plasma laboratories for oh, the better part of a century now, with an anode at one end and a cathode at the other, and you have uh, certain plasma structures in there, like the anode glow and the, and the corona and so on. And that's exactly what we're seeing. The, uh, the standard model says, no, 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 this is not electrical. This is all having to do with winds and pressures and, and um, uh, atomic energy and that sort of thing. But they really don't want to talk very much about electrical processes. And we do. And uh, this latest data says that, um, you know, to, to, I can't put it any other way, that uh, the electrical model is correct. There indeed is uh, an electrical boundary out there consisting of a wall of, of electrons, which is what we have been, Wall and I and several of us have called a virtual cathode. We've been calling it that for years, and I think it turns out that we are, we are correct. If the sun is at the center of a heliospheric electric field, many of the sun's most puzzling features may now have a coherent explanation. This may also explain why so many recent discoveries have presented mysteries for solar physicists. One of the most important ones, because of a, of a paper that was published by a fellow whose name is Hannah Sogi, and he had two or three cooperative workers with him, uh, essentially disproves the idea that there can be a convection zone on the sun. The standard model of the sun says there's a, there's a fusion reaction in the middle and there's a radiation zone where, where energy is radiated away from that uh, fusion zone. And then after a while, about halfway out to the surface of the sun, the energy becomes transported by the convection process, which is matter moving in response to a temperature gradient. 
And Hannah Sogi's investigation absolutely says if mankind has learned anything about fluid flow over the last hundred years, uh, about uh, convection especially, convection is not possible in that area of the sun. So that was a dagger through the heart of that vampire. I mean, uh, there is no way that that standard model can, can survive if Hannah Sogi and his colleagues are, are correct. The other one is how round the sun is. It's almost a perfect sphere. And uh, if it were, uh, as the standard model pr predicts it to be, it, it should not be that round. Of course, the, the, it's always been a problem for standard model as to why does the sun rotate so much more rapidly at its equator than it does at its poles. One of the big problems, it seems to me, that has never really been answered by the standard model is why does the sun have a corona at all? Why is it there in the first place? It serves no useful function if the sun is just a, a fusion furnace. I mean, it's, their, their model is it, the sun is like a big wood stove, except it isn't burning wood, it's burning hydrogen and turning it into helium. And so fine, if that's the way it is, then what is that glow we see out there, that electrical plasma discharge that we call the sun's corona? Why is it there? For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.